Hi, I'm Ian Johnston. In previous episodes, we've discussed how leptospirosis affects humans and animals, and how we go about diagnosing lepto. In this episode, we'll show how to prevent yourself or your animals from getting infected with leptospirosis, and how to treat it if you do. Ideally, you really want to avoid getting the bug in the first place. You can do this by taking some basic precautions, such as wearing personal protection equipment, like aprons in the dairy shed, and improving hygiene in the work environment, for example, not eating, drinking, or smoking while working. Particular care should be taken when storing stock feed, as rodents can contaminate it. Any contaminated feed should be thrown away. Also, if you do come into contact with animal urine, you should immediately flush the area with water. This includes areas like your mouth, eyes, and any exposed cuts or abrasions. Use soap and water to clean your hands and face, and dry them thoroughly. The good news is, if leptospirosis is diagnosed early enough, it can be easily treated by antibiotics in both humans and animals. But, as occupational physician John Kerr tells us, you need to get treated straight away. It's really important to be seen the same day that the suspicion is raised and to start on treatment the same day, even though the diagnosis may not be nailed down yet. So whether it's to go to the emergency department, go and see the locum GP, go and see your favourite old GP, it doesn't matter, be seen the same day and make sure you get treatment started with an antibiotic. The same goes for animals. Make sure you consult your vet straight away if you suspect lepto. Richard Hilson describes how he dealt with a case of leptospirosis in lambs. Again, he emphasises the little things you can do while getting treatment to prevent the further spread of leptospirosis. He had an interesting case um, autumn last year with a big bunch of trade lambs on a farm not far from here. Probably one of the standout things really was that the we looked at the carcasses in the shed and they were all, I think there might have been three or four of them, they were all yellow, like nearly lemon yellow. Um, and it, had, it funnily enough hadn't sent up any flags to the farmers, but um, when I looked at their hands, they, they all had typical farmers' hands, they'd cut some grazes and things, and really you know, they'd, been, they'd plucked the guts out of these animals, they'd, they'd, they'd pulled the bladders out and they were, they were in the gun, really. And um, so we dealt with dealt with what the issue was, um, took some samples, turned out to be Pavona, the, the pig strain, um, and on the way back to the clinic, organising over the RT, organised some antibiotics for them, also got on the phone and rang the local health centre, the GP, one of the, for the manager of the property, and um, we arranged for the, all the staff to go in there that afternoon and have a consult with the GP, and he prescribed prophylactic antibiotics for them. Also, when they did the treatment, they kept the dogs out of the yards. They um, they wore gloves, which we supplied. Um, they wore safety goggles or sunglasses, um, long sleeves, and just didn't talk too much, just to try to reduce the risk of any urine splash while they're handling them. The best long-term strategy for protecting against leptospirosis is vaccinating your animals. Vaccinating animals also protects the people who come in contact with them, so the benefit is twofold. As Professor Peter Wilson from Massey University says, a good vaccination program is one that starts early, is maintained and is tailored to the individual farm. Getting a vaccination program right is quite critical, absolutely critical, because if you don't get it right, it's not going to be fully effective and you're not going to get the production and health responses that you need. So uh, getting it right goes back to the concept of planning and understanding all of the management factors on that farm that relate to leptospirosis and having a program in place which is well considered, well understood by the farmer. The earlier that the animal is vaccinated in relation to the time of infection, the better because the vaccine is much more effective in controlling the infection if the animal is immune before they get exposed. So as a general principle, starting young is the key factor. There are, there's a requirement for a sensitizer and a booster around four to six weeks apart. And also there is a requirement for an annual booster to protect older animals. And a program can be designed to have maternal antibody protection transfer to the progeny. 
So it depends on the management plan within the farm as to when the strategic times are for those vaccinations. The key element really is that a vaccination program has to be tailor-made for the individual property. In short, if you are serious about reducing risk to yourself, to your family, to your workers and your stock, vaccination is the way to go. However, if you have concerns in relation to yourself, contact a medical advisor and don't hesitate to contact your vet in regard to your animals. We hope you found this episode helpful. Please check out our website for more information.